Hey guys, I'm here. I'm back again. I'm going to try this again. And I'm not going to lie, it's really difficult to try to get right back into filming again. And their editing and all these ideas I want to talk about and the lighting in the room. I don't know what I'm doing. But I'm sure I'll get the hang of it as I have before. Um, so I guess for... It's kind of like a weekly wrap-up, I guess, video to fill you guys in on what I've been reading and a couple of things of what I've purchased. So um, maybe having the book of what I read in front of me might be helpful. Okay, sorry about that. So what I re recently read over this last week was uh, Ignite, the second book by Sarah B. Larson. And the and I finished The Revenant last weekend, and I'm going to do a book movie review on this one. Okay, so that's what I have been reading. Um, what I'm currently reading is for the Escape Club book club pick for January, we're reading Illuminae. So I'm going to be started on that. The conversation will begin at the end of January over either on Goodreads or on the website. And I will put my Goodreads link below if you would like to check out the books that I have been reading this year and what I've been looking at. So the other thing that I just started was Endure by Sarah B. Larson. I really enjoy this series and I hate to see it come to an end, but I really enjoy the way that it's going. And I love the main character. She's absolutely amazing and the whole reason that I have been keeping up with this series. And then the um, one kind of big splurge for myself for my Christmas present this year is I bought myself the, um, you know, the Song of Ice and Fire series in these smaller books. Um, they're leather. And I liked these better. I had the mass market paperbacks, but I gave it to my brother because I was having a hard time reading them because the, the words were like all the way right into the crease of the books. And so these are actually a bit smaller than mass market paperback. I guess a little bit wider, but smaller in height. And so they're really easy to hold, but I, I know some people don't like that, but I really have been enjoying just the feel of this series. I can't wait to get started reading it again. I've been putting this one off. So, that that was my kind of big Christmas splurge on myself for this year. And then some other books that I've been picking up recently. I picked up The Secrets of Deercliff Grange School by Kim Newman. He's been on my radar rec recently. Um, he has this Ac uh, Dracula series that I've been just seeing everywhere. when Because I, I, I really like vampires. And so... When I go searching for new books, you know, he keeps popping up on my list. And so I've actually purchased a couple of his books now. The Anno Dracula book uh, series, I think I bought all three. And then this one just recently I saw on the shelf. So I picked this one up as well. It says, a week after her mother found her sleeping on the ceiling, Amy Thompson is delivered to her new school, Deercliff Grange in Somerset. Although it looks like a regular boarding school, Amy learns that Deercliff's girls are special. The daughters of criminal masterminds, outlaw scientists, and master magicians. Several of the pupils have also have special gifts like Amy's. And when one of the girls in her dormitory is abducted by a mysterious group in black hoods, Amy forms a secret, super-powered society called the Moth Club to rescue their friend. They soon discover that the hooded conspiracy runs through the school, and it's up to the Moth Club to get to the heart of it. So, um, I... You know, I love books that are in schools, and I love unusual, st strange stories, and that sounded just right up my alley, so I really enjoyed that one. I really enjoyed it. I haven't read it yet. My cat is, uh, is trying to climb up my back. Okay. <laughs> this is Spinky. Yeah, I, I know. Everybody has a cat. They show. Hi, Spinky. <laughs> Okay, so um, another book that I picked up is by R. Scott Baker, The Darkness That Comes Before, and it's the series is called The Prince of Nothing. And this one I saw a YouTube video on, and 
Uh, you know, he didn't do a really great job of describing it, but it sounded interesting enough to me to actually look into it. So um, I, I did that, and I decided to pick up the first book just to check it out. Um, in a world scarred by apocalypse, evoking both our unknown future and our <laughs> archaic past, Untold thousands are gathering for a crusade. Traveling among them, two men and two women are ensnared by a mysterious traveler. I cannot pronounce that name. Part warrior, part philosopher, part sorcerer, uh, part sorceress and charismatic presence from lands long thought dead. The darkness that comes before is a history of the great holy war. And like all histories, the survivors write its con conclusion. Sorry, he's got his nails digging in my shoulder. It's not very fun. Okay, um, this one, my brother actually picked, picked it up while we were shopping and he handed it to me saying, you should buy this. And I did. It sounded interesting. Dawn breaks over Vancouver and no one in the world has slept the night before or almost no one. A few people, perhaps one in 10,000 can still sleep and they've all shared the same golden dream. After six days of absolute sleep deprivation, psychosis will set in. After four weeks, the body will die. In the interim, panic ensues and a bizarre new world arises in which those previously on the fringes of society take the lead. So, pretty interesting. People with sleeping problems. It is a Arthur C. Clarke Award, shortlisted award nominee. And yes, I did earlier this year, not much earlier, just a couple months ago, I got a signed copy of The Beast by Lindsay Mead which I plan on reading and reviewing. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, I also picked up The Rim of Morning 2 Tales of Cosmic Horror by William Sloan. And what really grabbed me on this one is, of course, cosmic horror. I love horror books. Um, it, it says, in the 1930s, William Sloan wrote two br brilliant novels that gave a whole new meaning to cosmic horror. In To Walk the Night, Bark Jones and his college buddy Jerry Lister, a science whiz, head back to their alma mater to to visit a cherished professor of astronomy, of astronomy. They discover his body consumed by fire in his laboratory and an uncannily beautiful young widow in his house. But nothing compares to the relevant that Jerry and Bark encounter in the deserts of Arizona at the end of the book. In The Edge of Running Water, which is the second book in this book, Julian Blair, a brilliant electrophysicist, physicist, has retired to a small town in remote Maine after the death of his wife. His latest experiments threaten to shake up the town, not to mention the universe itself. So um, there's an introduction by Stephen King, and I did think that that sounded interesting as well. Um, Wolf in the White Van, this one I also saw a video on, and um, I'm, it just, really piqued my interest, I guess. I don't know. Uh, it says, isolated by a disfiguring in injury since the age of 17, Sean Phillips crafts imaginary worlds for strangers to explore as the creator of Trace Italian, a text-based role-playing game that's played through the mail. Sean guides players through his intricately imagined terrain turn by turn as they search out sanctuary in a ravaged, savage future America. I also picked up a copy of Dr. Mutter's Marvels. I saw this on the shelf um, almost, you know, the same week I had finished reading uh, The Life and Death of Zebulon Finch, which I really enjoyed. And there's a section in that book where he spends time traveling with this um, show, traveling show that sells healing potions to people. And so when I came across this, I decided you know, that still sounds pretty interesting. It was still fresh in my mind. And I want to say that it's a nonfiction book as well. But I only have one hand and I can't check. But, um, so that one. And then the last one that I picked up recently was The Crucible of Souls. And this one is about a boy whose parents are slain. The boy is raised by monks to initiate him into the arcane mysteries of sorcery. Growing up plagued by questions about his past, Calden vows to discover who his parents were and why they were killed. 
The search will take him beyond the walls of the monastery into the unfamiliar and dangerous chaos of city life. With nothing to his name but a pair of mysterious heirlooms and a handful of coins, he must prove his talent to become apprentice to a guild of sorcerers. Okay, so I'm sorry this is my first video back and it's not exactly edited, but I sat down over the weekend several times and I'm learning this new editing program and it's going to take a lot much more work than I wanted, but I really wanted to get a video up this weekend and... <laughs> Uh, Spanky obviously needed to say hi to you guys. It's been a long time. So anyway, thank you for stopping by and I'm definitely gonna have new videos out um, Better quality of course. Sorry. This was rushed and Anyway, I'm just really happy to see you guys and I'll talk to you later. Bye